You guys collect anything? Yes. Uh huh. What do you collect? Don't say Pokemon cards. I'll get so upset at you. What do you collect? Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that kind of stuff. And shells. <laughs> no. Gosh dang it, we're trying to we're trying to record a podcast. <laughs> you're gen, you're being genuine. Yeah. You re, you. My first job, I wanted to be a geologist. So you collect ro- like what you keep these in your top drawer? Like where do, do you, you have keep any these on rocks? you? Do you have any on you right now? No, but if I had my fanny pack with me, I would. Your fa- <laughs> you keep them in a fanny pack? Well, just in the ones that I pick up recently before I <laughs> put them in my. <coughs> this is not okay. <laughs> They're great. I love them. <laughs> I can't with you sometimes. G- and shells, uh, of course, you'd take it to another, another level. V- shells. Yeah, you can't go. You to know, the Susie. Yeah. Sells. Careful. And Sally, both uh, of them. Yeah, both of them. You, what do you collect? Don't say something that's gonna be, uh, make me upset. I can't do that today. No, I was gonna say coffee brewers. Mm, yeah, coffee that's brewers. Fair. What's Co- that? You know, coffee brewers. Julia's making fun of me on Sunday. She's like, "Is it burial or is it burial? Hmm. <laughs> is it Damon's? <laughs> yes, Damon. <laughs> yes, I did. I was like Damon's. Damon's. What is, uh, so you did like French what? presses and Kim X's, you know, just all oh, different like types all of coffee brewers. Util- yeah, okay. Yeah. Coffee paraphernalia. That makes it sound wrong. Okay. But yeah. That's coffee, the correct <laughs> word. Coffee made. equipment. Yeah. Coffee equipment. Yes. Just that's say accurate. that. Just say that next time. Just yes. say I, I collect <laughs> coffee equipment. Yes, I do. I'm a coffee guy. A big coffee guy. You know, I was a Celsius guy. And I haven't had a Celsius Damon. since that Praise podcast. God. I'm not kidding. So you you you're off meth now. Well, oh yeah, we had a big deliverance yep. service at our church. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. We did actually. Yeah, people are. reached out to me after that episode. Said you good? Yeah, you good. I you, had someone call meth. me and they said I can't finish the episode. You are not a rock star monster. Drinker. And I personally have to object to that. And say, yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. We know you. We know the real you. Someone I, I from resent I- the rock star. <laughs> but you know, Sally accurate. from Indiana doesn't know you, but we know you. <laughs> and you're a sick son of a baker. <laughs> 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 got me there for a second. You got there, right? it's, it's a little jarring. It's a little jarring. But I can say this on, I can say that on this pod. Yeah. yeah. It's like, We're shut edgy. the front door. A, yeah. Oh, wow. That, uh, that will always get. That kind of makes me stand up. A I'm bit. afraid to like try to say something. Cause yeah, you're going to say something. I'll say it. <laughs> you know what I collect? What do you you guys know this about me. I collect yes. a few things. Mm-hmm. I, I only hat, know one. Hat collection's off the charts. It's off the charts. I love a good hat. Yes. I keep it for a rainy day. Today when I go, and I'm always trying to wear a different hat. You know, d- today I go through my whole, you know, uh, I've got a couple bins of hats. This is a true story. I have t- two wow. bins. And then I've got three shelves of hats. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a whole situation. Julia is always so mad. Like, when you get rid of some hats. And like, that's my Julia voice, by the way. <laughs> get rid of some hats. And I'm like, Julia, <laughs> they're my fave. Those your impression of your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is something else. <laughs> Don't put it out with your boots, Ted. Wait, next episode, you should take a picture and let the people yes. choose the hat. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like that's something that's really cool. It'd be cool to like. Hand off to the, to the boys one day. To the next know? generation. Some some yeah. hand off nice watches. I hand off old Malbon golf hats. Amazing. Yep. <laughs> some people rocks. Some people. <laughs> I just got a rock tumbler. I'm so excited to put it to you. <laughs> I'd rather rock oh. stars than rocks any oh, day. I'm just saying. A, a rock what? A tumbler. What does that mean? It polishes them. This is not okay. This is why socially we just have a ton of issues. I love your faith. It's your function <laughs> that I struggle with. It's okay. I understand. <laughs> not for everyone. <laughs> it is not for everyone. I collect, I collect hats, and then I collect ball markers. Do you know huh. what that is? It's like in golf. You know, you oh you, yeah. Once yeah, you get yeah. on yep. the green, you have to like you mark your ball and mm. you, you put it in the ground that's and, cool. and and then that's where your ball is. You mm-hmm. know, and I love when I go to a golf course. I like to get ball markers, but the other thing I'm kind of collecting. Disney pens. It you do Disney no, pens. No, you. No, stop. My <laughs> mom does that. That's <laughs> that that's Disney jarring pen? as well. <laughs> the shock on your face. Do you collect? Yeah, Disney yeah. Pens? No, no. I like to collect hoodies mm-hmm. and crew necks. Yep. And then I'll. W- this is my flow with them. I'll exhaust them. Yeah. And then it's I gotta give them away. Mm. 
So I like coming after they've been done. It's like a, it's like a good worship song. Yes, this is real. Mm-hmm. I listen to a worship song and get all the oil out of that yep. thing, and then it's gone. And then fresh oil for someone else. Yeah, fresh oil for somebody like, else. Like, Have you heard? I like the, Lake Life. The Lake Life sweatshirt. You rock that thing. I love oh that one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lake yes. Life. Yep. I think of Island Lake every time she wears it. Yeah, it's just, you think of Island Lake. That's funny. <laughs> but, you know, it's important to collect things. And you know what I collect? Leaders. Let's go. Oh, here we go, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for another episode of Leadership Lean In. We don't lean back. We don't do the rock away. We're leaning in to the subject of leadership, trying our darndest, trying our best just to get a, just a little bit better. We cannot promise. We've said this. We can, I cannot promise perfection, but as always, promised and delivered progress. We're trying to get just a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser, a little bit healthier, and uh, grab some truths together. We are a, we are a small little uh, a nation, but we're a mighty force to be reckoned with. Leaner Nation. Episode today, 147. We're quickly climbing to 150 episodes, on which that day we'll make available. We're going to have a little bit of a merch going on. I'm a leaner. So very excited. Thank you for subscribing to the channel or subscribing to wherever you listen to this podcast. Uh, hit a like for us. Uh, leave a comment. I love seeing the comments. Helps us so much. Inspires us so much. And we're just going to do our best to grow together. Today. Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I wonder what that sounds like. Do you realize that that's the second time you've done it? Yeah, in, but I like both times. <laughs> it's not as loud as you would think. It's not? No. Mm-mm. But it is still just like. A, it's there. It's iconic. It's it like, has to happen. Here we go. We should yes. make it a sound. Oh, man. Love just, Jeremiah. just, is that, does that say pets? Yes. But hit that one. What's that one? <laughs> oh, right. Our pets' heads are falling off. Oh, my gosh. That's a classic right there. Um, hit him with Michael Scott, please. Pearly worm gets the worm. That's about, that's about the. <laughs> Wednesday morning. That's, that's, about, the, that's, what that's about the seashell kind of <laughs> confidence we're looking for today. You know, when I first uh, started playing worship, we used to sing this song in church. Let the river flow. I'm big singing now in leadership leaning. Let the river flow. Holy Spirit, come. Move in power. Let the river flow. Then the girls would go, let the river flow. Let the river flow. And it makes me think about overflow. Amen. Wow. Overflow is, as I've said before, changing the game. <laughs> they are changing the actual game. And we here at the LLI Institute. Whoa. Are we an institution? Uh, L-L-I-I. We're a college? What are we? Oh, we're a podcast. Here at our nation, in our (laughs) nation, in our government, we Mm. value overflow like crazy. And tell everybody, April, what is overflow doing? Overflow allows um, your customers, your clients to give to you in creative ways. makes it easy for you to do that. They have an amazing team to help you facilitate the gift of stock uh, through trusts or wills. It is opening up so many more options. That's right. For gifts. Creative generosity. And by the way, we are not just promoters of the product. Users. As for me and Nate, we are users yes, of this product. Yes, we are. April, maybe one day you'll get on the generosity train Gosh. that we've been on for years. <laughs> Stingy McStingy over here. <laughs> But Overflow is changing the game. Shout out to Overflow. We love you. We appreciate you so much. And that's overflow.co slash LLI to set up a demo today. Is there a better city in the whole world than Los Angeles? Not a single one. You You know, some people are like, oh, I love my city. I live in Jersey. I live (laughs) in, you know, the Hamptons. I live in, you know, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, we live in Los Angeles. That's right. True. And here in Los Angeles, the beaches are glorious. The coffee flows like milk and honey, and the food is off the charts. But the best thing going on in L.A., if you are a young adult, is, tell them, Nate, is Zoe College. And we think that you should make your way to Los Angeles. If you're 18 to 25 years old, make your way over here. Not only are you going to learn from some of the greatest leaders in the world, you're going to get plugged in. We we actually have a leadership lean-in track this year for for Zoe College. But you're also going to have the opportunity to start your degree, finish your degree, 
We have master's programs available. Amazing. So Zoe College, head over to zoechurch.org slash Zoe College to find out all the information you need. Because, because by the way, you get this through South Southeastern Eastern Union. University. That's, right. That's who you really go through educational school uh, through, but get a practical hands-on ministry training here in L.A. That's right. Zoe. Every morning I'm sitting at my counter. I got my computer out. I got my coffee. I'm, I'm working. Julia takes from this upper shelf this big green package. She starts to mix her little drink, and she asks me, would you like? Tell them what it is, April. It's AG1. Oh, it's AG1. And if you want to Great branding, by the way. It looks so it cool. It is yeah. clean. The font choice. Oh, I, I, I think I say yes because the product is so dang good, but also just it looks so good. It yes. does. We got a we got a package one time from them, and there was a green tote bag in it with the AG One logo. My staff was actually fighting over it. I'm gonna admit I have it. (laughs) (laughs) You stole it. I stole it. (coughs) Wait, which is interesting because I've been looking for that. Dang it! (laughs) Yeah, I got a follow up email about it. That's what I thought. (laughs) Well, um, yeah. Anyway, um, we have got a deal for you, all of you leaners. You can try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively mm. at drinkag1.com slash LLI. That's drinkag1.com slash LLI. Check it out. Get the deal. Get healthy. Lead better. We're going back to the podcast. Today, we're talking about eight truths for life and leadership. Eight truths for life and leadership. I saw this on a video, and the moment I saw it, I'm turning that into an episode. Uh, By the way, I gotta give I gotta give this guy. You gotta give cred. Okay. I love that. I I, I, I'm a firm believer in giving credit. Of course, every time someone doesn't give credit on social media to an original post, people go off in the comments. Hey. Yes, absolutely. By the way, I don't know if I did this properly. I wrote him and told him this, and I want to just say the demon prayer. At the end of my message, uh. I wrote him, I transcribed a prayer mm-hmm. that Robert Morris prayed. Uh. Mm-hmm. And that sections was Robert Morris. So I wrote him and thanked him. Great. And said, hey. So cool. Nine years ago, he preached that message. Wow. What? He didn't preach Mark 5. He preached yeah, a different yeah. message. But that prayer. But at the end of the, the message, he prayed this prayer. And I was so moved by it. I, I transcribed it. And I wrote, cause it's important, I think, yeah. to give to give credit. Of course. What do they say? The first time I give credit, the second time, it's mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, something like that. Yeah. yeah. This guy is joedrummerboy.com. Now, mm. I can't vouch for all of joedrummerboy.com, Blink-182's <laughs> content, but, shout out to Travis, but <clears throat> I can vouch for this one. And he gave eight truths for... Uh, life and leadership I want to unpack together today. Number one, we'll go through them, you know, at a good rate. Train yourself to take nothing personally and save yourself from 99% of mental problems. Now, I know that's an extreme 99% of mental <laughs> problems. So, yep. we're, we're using this figuratively, yes. not yes. literally, yeah. of course. But I like that. Train yourself in life to take nothing personal. This is a big value of mine. I've probably talked about this a ton of times, but I think what trips most people up in life is they just take way too many things personal. Mm. And you're taking things personal that have nothing to do with you. Mm. Yeah. It's it, it, it's this thought. I, I will never forget when people used to get mad on the basketball court. I had this friend that would say, I don't think that guy's mad at us. I think he's mad at his dad. Mm. And that joke resonates with me. as like there's something else driving that. Yeah. Financial pressure marriage issues identity whatever it is but just train yours i think this is so healthy in life why are you taking everything personal it's not Mm. right and i think that you're gonna get you're gonna get hung up and stuck in life you you know in the book help i work with people i write i write a whole chapter on don't don't let anything break your stride Mm -hmm. just keep going don't take it personal right yeah I love it because even if something is personally aimed at you and intentional, if you've trained yourself to not take it personal, it still won't affect you. That's right. Like, you're going to be good. You're going to be fine. And it's not really worth addressing in that way. Like, if someone could come to you and have a real conversation, you can go to them. I think that's great. But we don't have to waste time and space and energy on wondering and thinking. Is that what they meant? Is that not what they meant? Right. Yeah, it's not worth it. 
not only now we're, we're trying to think of what book you've given out the most, and we were like, it's got to be the Beta Satan. Hands down. It's got to be a book about taking things personally, offense. <laughs> and I think one of the things it says in there is like, it's inevitable that you that someone will offend you. Oh, my gosh. Or, or, that, or that offense will come. Whether or not you choose to be offended is up to you. So That's, good. That is it right there. What do I do with it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I see this in the life of Joseph. He just keeps marching, keeps Mm -hmm. going. I'm not going to – he could have been so sideways from his brothers, so sideways from Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. Could have been sideways, forgotten in prison. But maintaining that, I'm the bigger person. I'm the forgiver. I'm the blesser. I'm the healer. That is a perspective, Mm -hmm. and I think that's really wise. Here's the next one, number two. By the way, I set my thing, did not – and it's still doing it. What, What do I know about iPads and we whatnot. We need Sammy in here. Uh, num- <laughs> no, no one is coming to save you from your problems. Your life is your responsibility. That's great. No one is coming. And I, it, right when I heard this, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a friend right now that's going through a massive storm, massive issue on every front. And we're talking a lot. Mm. And I'm doing my best. But I can't save him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I can be there. I can, I can pray, I can be a support, I can be an ear, I can be a, a, a sounding board. I can't come and rescue him. Totally. And so take responsibility. I got myself into this. I'm going to do my best through God's strength to get myself out of this. Mm-hmm. And I think rather than going like, I'm in financial pressure, I need them to write a check. I'm in marital problems, I need them to come counsel. I'm in uh, a situation in, you know, fill in the blank, really. Yeah. I... It's with my boys right now. This is so fun. You know, they get in fights or they get in, you know, situations together. And I'm trying to teach them, training them right now. The two biggest words I use with them are extreme ownership. Mm -hmm. Rather than he hit me, he made me trip, he said this, he, no, 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 hold on, stop. I want you, what could you have done better? How could you have owned that moment better? Uh, hit Nick, Nick Saban for me real fast. You all may be taking the week off, but I'm not. I'm taking responsibility. I'm taking control That's over right. my life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be as good of a leader as possible. So, d- you know, don't believe that someone can come in and rescue your knight in shiny armor, your hero with a check. No, your life is your responsibility. Number yeah. three, no one focuses on you the way you think they do. So don't be shy. Take chances. Mm-hmm. This is really cool. In other words, like, um, why not ask for something big? Yeah. yeah. Why, why not, why not uh, see if you can get that meeting? Don't be shy. I think sometimes in leadership or in life even, people can overthink it. Oh, I don't want to be an a, a inconvenience. In fact, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and their whole value with me is always telling me, I don't want to be an inconvenience. And so I'm having to tell them, no, no, no. You not engaging me is inconvenience me. Yeah. yeah can I just say that's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in life. When people assume I'm too busy, I, I don't want to be a burden. I know how busy you don't know how busy I am. You don't, don't know yeah. what I value. You, you're assuming that I put other things above this relationship, and that's, that's not right. the case. Yeah, and I think that that's honestly like what I found in people. And when I've been like a team lead, I've when I've seen that in other people, like I can resonate, and I've seen that in myself. And I think that's a really awesome healing opportunity for you to like guide people through because I think that a lot of times that's just a very deep personal belief that people have to overcome and yeah. that's a really cool yeah, right. pastoring discipleship leadership moment that's exactly right and I think um what happens is if you're shy and you're not shooting your shot it speaks of um you know we talk about this a lot these two things inferiority struggling to say that word very well <laughs> I was like, that, that r is like where does it in it, from, 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 <laughs> from, from, i think we're in the month of february <laughs> i'm from burgundy <laughs> do you know in, that reference i do in, okay in burgundy complex <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then the imposter syndrome mm-hmm. when i am secure and confident in who i am uh i don't have a problem Asking for so and so to, you know, be a part of so. I I think th- I think we do people a disservice. By the way, when we don't ask for people to, what you said, team lead. It made me think of leading volunteers. You're shortcutting people's growth if you're. I don't want to be an inconvenience. I don't want to ask them for too much. Yep. 
they want to be involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They want to serve. They want to be on the journey. They want to be along. They want to be asked for extra. They want to go the extra mile. And if I always treat them like, oh, I don't want to be it, I'm not going to get their best. So I think even what comes to me, if I'm not shy, if I'm confident, asking, requesting, not afraid of rejection, it speaks to my belief that no one is going to make this happen outside of me. Mm. So I've got to do my best just to step up and, and, and involve and include as many people as possible to the best of my ability. Mm. The next one, number four. If you find someone smarter than you, don't compete with them. Work with them. Yeah. This is really good. Because I always think, uh, what's the saying? If you're the smartest person in the room, go find a new room. Mm -hmm. If you find someone that's more talented, has a bigger world, has a bigger network, has more money than you, is smarter than you, more gifted than you, don't compete with them. Work with them. What is the math of collaboration? Oh, it's called multiplication. And this could multiply you out. I saw this thing actually even about podcasts. And it was giving three, three, three ways to grow your podcast. And it was really cool, the first two. But the third one is, hey, if you want to grow your podcast, get other people that have a podcast on your podcast. Yeah. Yep. Get other people that have their own network to be a part. And I was thinking for Leadership Lean and all the guests that we've had and how much that's helped growth we've had some amazing guests mm-hmm. on leadership that's right. that that didn't hurt us no that didn't compete with it helped us right and so i just think you know if you want to live in a really big world it requires a big a really big soul because a big soul allows you to go i don't compete with anybody i'm just blessed to be in conversation i'm blessed to be in the room i'm blessed to be in friendship and to have relationship and I hope, by the way, I just think it's good to live your whole life this way, going like, I'm so impressed with so-and-so. I think so and so is so good at that. They're so much better than me than that than I am at that. And wow, I appreciate that. And living with that sense of gratitude mm. that will take you so far in relationships rather than seeing yourself as inferior, nailed it, a, a, or, or less than. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Totally. It's that idea that you that we talk about on here so much you talked about it earlier and we talked about it in the last episode i think having a big soul and a big worldview there's it's not that there's not enough room for the both of you there's that's right always room and, and i think people get wrong when they go if they're shining bright it makes my light dim mm. right what a f- bad way to look at life totally if you're doing well and i'm connected to you we're doing well that's right yeah i, I think you know, it goes back to that first one. If you take things, if you make it personal, you're never going to want to collaborate. That's right. But if you have the vision in mind, if you have the big picture in the mind, y- you have a goal, then collaboration is like the only way that you can get to that place faster or farther, you know, down the line. You can't, you can't do it on your own except for a certain timeline. Collaboration is the only way to get there. Such a big deal. Uh, next one. Uh, when we see others positively it reflects our positive attributes. When we see others negatively, it reflects our negative traits. Mm. And I just think this one is huge, man. This one. When I see people, and this is one of my big values. I've been preaching this as of late. If you really want to grow in your leadership, make a commitment to brag behind people's back. Mm -hmm. That's great. Just brag. That's right. They're the best. They're so good at this. They're... You know, if you're guilty of talking behind people's back, let it be in the positive light, not the negative. Love that. And this this value here is when you see others in a positive way, it reflects on all how positive you are. Mm-hmm. But make no mistake about it. When you see the negative and you're speaking negative, it reflects your negative traits. And so th- it no longer becomes about them. Wow. You got to understand the words that are coming out of your mouth reflect you. Mm-hmm. And when you take power, when you take control over the narrative of what you're speaking, all of a sudden you're like, in fact, I saw this last night. Um, what, what's the, uh, David Goggins. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, David Goggins will make me want to slap myself sometimes. <laughs> Truly. David Goggins was saying, he was talking about how someone that moves in power, they're never speaking negative about someone behind their back. That's great. He was just, he, he was doubling down this idea. He said, people that move and they're a force, they don't have time to sit around in petty terms 
and talk negative about others. They got too much going on. And I think this is a big value. Let's pause here for a second because it is the lowest level of leadership to bash people behind their back. And it only reflects on you negatively, not on them. They're not even there to defend themselves. Yeah. Mm. They're not even there to say, well, you know, actually I was in a bad spot or I'm not doing that. Yeah. Well. It, it, they can't even. So it wow. only makes you look bad, mm-hmm. not them. So the question is not how do you want paint, how do you want to paint people to be perceived as? The question is how do you want to come across? Mm. How do you want to be seen? How do you want other people to receive you or look at you? A man, Proverbs, a man is ensnared, caught, trapped by the words of his mouth. So you're either trapped in blessing and positivity and light and life, because that's the power of life and death is in the tongue. So you're either seen in that light or you're seen in toxicity, cancer, negativity, gossip, division, oh, slander. Yeah. Choose your own adventure. Have you seen how David Goggin handles other people's criticism? Mm -mm. So his whole thing is exactly what he's saying. I don't have time to address them with with my words. He said, instead, I I hired a producer to go on social media, find all the worst comments, and make songs out of them. So when I work out, I can prove them wrong at the gym. (laughs) That's so crazy. (laughs) You're so lazy. You are the worst. Who's going to carry the boats? You're such a (laughs) chump. You are fake. You're a phony. You... You're a celebrity preacher. <laughs> Literally, it's like that. It's like <laughs> you out here wearing sneakers. You such a little snake. You uh, collect you, rocks. You a false prophet. <laughs> you a she seashell Sally. You a little rock. You tested positive you on for meth. TikTok. <laughs> you are a meth from Celsius. You are a rock star guy. <laughs> you are a monster. You are a rock star guy. You up in your feelings. Oh, that's all no, I got. For me. <laughs> You're emotional. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of music that's happened in the last three oh, episodes. Oh, I'm a big just... music guy. You know that. Next <laughs> one, number six. Comfort is the worst addiction and cheap ticket to depression. That's good. Comfort. Pause. Comfort. I used to have this whole thought about pastors that what I thought killed a lot of the pastors uh, that, you know, at least I was growing up around was the, what I called the lazy boy recliner on Sunday afternoon. Mm. So it's like that, you know, just that um, Sunday morning's done, lazy boy recliner, and then it's just over. It's a wrap, which shout out to the lazy boy recliner. I used to love me a, 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 yes. a football game. The with premium. That yeah, yeah. But, but, my, but my thought was, you know, once I got around Sunday night church, I'm like, how could we not be having Sunday night church every Sunday? Like, I just love Sunday nights. I love Sunday nights probably the most. Mm-hmm. Something about night church to me. And once I went to, you know, Hillsong really was the first church I really saw committed to Sunday nights. And it was the best service in, in Paris, London, Sweden, Melbourne, Sydney, New York, you know, anywhere I went, South Africa. It's like, oh, my gosh. This is their best service. There's something about comfort that would just take. It is It is the worst addiction. Comfort is the worst addiction. And it is the cheapest ticket to depression. Mm. We, it, it, everything about life is so counterintuitive. We, we think that, like, let's take sin, for example. I'm going to indulge myself in sin. I'll feel so much better. You feel worse. Mm. Right. I'm going to get so much comfort and just chill and ease. I'm miserable. Mm. Why are you miserable? You were not made to live in comfort. I think you're made to live in challenges. You're made to li- c- climb hills, conquer new mountains, conquer new, new, new projects, new situations. Like we're made to do that. Right. Yeah. We're made to give. Sorry, we're made, we're made to serve. Leadership, by the way, this morning, <laughs> my boys, Julia drove the boys this morning because we had a call. I had a Zoom call I had to be on. And so my boys are getting in the van. I said, look at me, look at me in the eyes. Look at me. Look at me in the eyes. What are you? I'm a leader. <laughs> That's right. You're a leader today. What is a leader, son? <laughs> Gosh dang it. We've been through this too many times. How does he not know this? A leader, son, is a servant. It's good. So good. So today, serve. 
serve your classroom, serve your teacher, serve on the playground. That's what a leader is. A leader is a servant. And I think that when we live for comfort, we live to be served. But when, we, when we're true leaders, we're looking to serve. Yeah. This one hits hard. Yeah. Is that the difference between rest and, and comfort? I was or re- rest just going to ask that. Like, I, I would assume rest is so that you can do there something. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Laziness. One day rest. Why? Because six days I'm working. Yeah. Laziness yeah. is in, in spite of doing. Because I did something, now I can. Yeah. That's it. TGIF That's it. is the biggest lie. Yes. It, it, yes. You know. Yeah. And I think something also that I think I really learned here um, at Zoe is ta- we, we talk about the concept of rest a lot and what it is and what it's not. And the idea that, you know. If we're going, if we're going Bible, um, you know, in Jesus, we we operate daily, hourly, minutely from a place of rest That's right. in That's Him, right. That's and right. so it's not seeking that always, like you said, that Friday, that vacation, that whatever it is, that comfort fix. It's not about that. It's from within. Yep, that's right. You're carrying it, mm-hmm. and and that that becomes your strength. So. There's th- I like that we're delineating the difference between rest and comfort. Mm-hmm. Comfort is just looking for the easy way out. Yeah. It's, uh, what, 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 uh, let me just read it again. It is the worst addiction and the cheapest ticket to depression. Mm. I believe yeah. in that. Two more. D- don't tell people, number seven, don't tell people more than they need to know, respect your own privacy. That's a good one. Ah! It's a bar. Don't tell people more than they, why are you? Why are you opening up and giving all these details and telling them then this happened and then that happened? And do you not respect your own privacy? It's so good. This one is powerful because how do people know all these details about you? Are you really comfortable with that? Is that really wise? I just, I, I, I think if I have any regrets in leadership, it's oversharing. Mm. If I have any regrets in leadership, it's telling all the details. And all the facts don't make the truth more truer. You can have the truth without all the facts. And so, honestly, speak the truth, of course. But you don't, you got to build a good fence around your privacy. It's like, you know, when you go to a website and they're asking you about cookies, which just still confuses me. Yeah, what are we sure. doing with cookies? What is, yeah, what Bangies, are these? cookies, have all the I'm cookies. I'm still yet to see a cookie on a website. Spread the cookies. <laughs> Do you want to have cookies? I don't know. I yes. just started denying everything. Really? I don't want your cookies. Yeah, what happens if you your, deny it? I don't even know, but it, to me, I'm protecting my own privacy. Do they not give you a... They uh, for cookies. me, it feels like the same thing as like not tr- putting your phone on an airplane. On an airplane. Yeah, it's like I it's feel like, like you gotta, you're, it's I wrong. have to accept. Yes, you accept cookies. Yes. I know. I always only accept in them. emergencies, right? Yeah. Do I accept <laughs> all? The, like, uh, yeah, I, I got to get on Wi Fi. I, I accept your cookies in this place, <clears throat> in this in 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 this uh, example. But to me, I I think I'm more aware of privacy mm. more than ever before. Yeah. You know, I don't want I don't want my house to be on the internet. I don't want. You know, I even I have some friends that don't post their kids online. Mm-hmm. You know, just I value the older I get, the more I don't want people to know really where I'm at. Mm. I stop. I stop being, um, you know, this might sound small, but like, um, yeah, th- here's an example. When I travel now, I might wait until I'm back. Right. Right. You know, just because it's like I don't want I want people to know. Oh, he's gone. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just an interesting era that we live in where it's like, totally. protect your privacy. Nobody else is going to do it. Yeah. Do you think that the reason why people share so quickly is because they don't have anything valuable enough to keep to themselves? Like, your house got broken into recently. I imagine now you have safe places. I mean, you already probably did, you know. But the things that you value the most, you you tuck away. You hide. Yeah. Is it that people don't value certain aspects or they're not doing anything in their life that they would consider valuable enough to keep to themselves. That's it. I think it is. It always goes back to self view. How important do I see my, 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 my belongings, my family, my life, my calling, my leadership, um, whatever I see is of high value. I protect. 
I mm-hmm. think it's also when you have a distorted view of relationships and you don't know how that works. Something because yes. I have a I had a very big oversharing problem, <laughs> and so I had <laughs> to literally work through it in therapy. And what my therapist told me was that a lot of people don't understand that there's an order of operations in re- in relationships mm. and trust comes before intimacy there you go and a lot of people swap them that one right there if i was a gen z i go that part (laughs) Ah, but i'm not number eight the family you create is more important than the family you come from this is huge because as great or as bad as your family was it doesn't matter the family you're creating right now is more important than what you come from and so if you come from a great home, thank God. But you can't live off that. Yeah. Mm-mm. You can't live off old glory, old success. What have you done for me lately? What are you building now? And take all that good. And is there any possibility you can enhance it and take it to another level? Take all those values, all that faith, all that investment, all that training, all that mentoring, all that development. And okay, we apply some of the same things. But the thing about the intranet and the thing about leadership lane in and the thing about all the the resources that we have now is I got John boy football 42 giving me lessons. Yes. My parents didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I have totally. more wisdom. I have more insight. I have more David Goggins and Ed my and John Maxwell and Patrick Lencioni. And i got so much wealth of information I could try and apply in my family, my, my, the last generation didn't have it. So the family you come from is important, but it's not even close to as important as the family you are currently creating right now. This is a big deal. It is. It's huge. The biggest. I, I When I first heard this, my, my knee-jerk reaction was, no, my, my blood is m- more important. Mm. But I think what we're not saying is, you know, to deny the your loyalty to your your family no never but Mm-mm. the effectiveness you know what i've learned outside of my family in the family i've created here you know especially in my le- leadership mm-hmm. is leaps and bounds that's it you know i didn't come from the family that's it that was the cards that were given to me but now i can you know deal my own hand if that that's makes right sense. that's really good that's right and i think when when um the earlier point no one else is coming. Yeah. Yeah. My, my parents aren't coming to raise my kids. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. raising my kids. Yeah. Yes. And for, you know, a single person without a family, your family is, you know, it's the people who are in my life right now. That's right. And it's preparing, it's building myself up for a potential, you know, future family or what fu- family looks like in the future. That's right. It's, it's not, if I don't have kids and I don't have a husband or, you know, I'm off the hook. That's right. You're building it now. That's right. Huge. It's really good now. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. By the way, I think I mentioned it before, but do me a favor here. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Hit a like if you can. Thank you for being on the journey with us. The best is yet to come. We'll see you soon.